What's going on? You ready? Hey, look at that. Look at that. What's it's going on? Night. It's Christian night. It's Christian night.
What is the purpose? God got a relief for you. Yes. God got a blessing for you. Yes. That blessing is right now. It's right there, right now. But it must be understood by you. God supplied the need. The not need, the one. Not the one. Come on, Bishop. You can stop demanding from God things that don't have no purpose in your life. Thank you, Jesus. God got something for you and everybody need. Yes. Let me say this again. Everybody, everybody need somewhere to live. Yes. Everybody need substance, food on, to Bishop. eat. Everybody need clothes to wear. Thank you. Need. Everybody need yeah. something to take care of. Thank you. God does that. God does I know I know you didn't get it right in your last 40 years. You didn't work like you ought to. And I know you didn't have a retirement. And I know nothing Speak went wrong Richard. with you. Come and on, all these it. things they told you, you did not follow the plan of it. But if you can trust God in this hour, yes. this is not a theological back, 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 backing out. I'm not backing out of the Bible. I'm just telling you God has a way of bringing all of that into fruition that you could not accomplish yes. with your natural man. Come on, Bishop. Tell you failed truth. and you just couldn't get it right. You couldn't work. You couldn't get money. You couldn't get a husband or a wife. Ooh. Things did not work out for you. So you ready to give up. Come on, Bishop. God say not tonight. Not tonight. The Holy Spirit is here. Not tonight. The Holy Spirit the is Holy here. The Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is Thank here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you know that 99% of the people, 0.9, that commit suicide had the blessing right around the corner? Yes, sir. It wasn't far from there. Yes, sir. But the enemy tricked them to believe it would never come. Yes, sir. You see, Jacob wrestled with God. He wrestled with the angel. And he said, listen, boy, your blessing been sent down. Been sent. I sent it down a while ago. But you you, you got to understand now, you had hindrance. Yes. You had de demons and imps and, and all these things in the way. And I broke through that. Yes, sir. Just to get you your blessing. Y'all, don't give up. Don't give up. All don't you quit. And don't bail out on God. Don't bail out. Your blessing is here. Yes, it is. Your spiritual relief from the stress and the pressures of life is it's, here. It's here. Hallelujah. God don't want you to give up. There ain't no more preaching about all this crazy stuff until you get your relief. I'm trying to tell you, have faith in God have tonight and he will do it. Come on, Bishop. Bishop. I give him glory because the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit is here. And whenever the Spirit of God shows up, everything get right. Your mind get right. Yes. Your body get right. Yes, sir. Your heart get right. Yes. Even the things that you don't know get right because the Spirit of God yes, sir. is here. The Holy Spirit is here. See, you see, I know the difference between a lie and the truth. Yes. God cannot lie. Every promise he ever made is yet, amen. amen. He cannot lie to you because you are a part of the divine promise he made to Abraham. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, you are in that promise, and you can ask God what you will according to his, according to his riches, according to the things he got stored up. You can have that. Yes. But it must be in, in your need. In the will of God. Your yes, need your must needs. be met. Yes. Do you know how much of a privilege it is? Listen here. The Bible says his eyes is on the sparrow. If his eyes is on a little bird who he's already provided seeds in the trees, worms in the ground, if his eyes is on the sparrow, yes. I know his eyes is on you. Yes. I know his eyes is on me. Yes. So let, let's be careful now. We're about to go into some transforming situations in this 2022. Yes, sir. But do not give up. Don't give up. God got your blessing. Yes. If you can embrace it, you can have it now. Yes, sir. But I'm trying to tell you now, don't fail this test. This is the only one you got to pass Hallelujah. in life. Have faith in God and doubt not. Doubt not. 
but he cannot lie. I know what they said, and I want to talk directly to you. Everybody preaching all these great fantasizing sermons, and this is your Bible. Believe what all this. Listen, God got a blessing for you. And that blessing is what he sent by way of the angels when you were created in your mother's womb. And when you arrived at this day, you just have to have faith and believe. Yes, and your Lord. blessing will be revealed to you. I trust and I depend and I lean oh, on my God. Hallelujah, yes. I'm going to take a seat here in a minute. Hallelujah. And I'm going to talk about the narrative today of why God allowed the slaughter of the innocents. Lord have mercy. Why did he allow it? Yeah, I mean, some of y'all got the same cry. God, why did you allow me to go through? Why, how come you just make me? God, how, 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 why, why? God has a purpose for your life that's outside of your mind. Yeah. And you need to understand the hour is now that you get the revelation on what it is God has purpose for your life. These are the things you must grab a hold to. These, like my wife said in a, in a great uh, passage the other, the other day, your needs are more precious yes. to the Lord than your wants. Yes, sir. I don't even think God hear your wants. Lord have mercy. He's conscious of your needs. Yes, before so, you even ask. So today, you're praying and you're wasting God's time asking for stuff. That's outside of your needs. Lord have mercy. Can I say that again? Yes. You need to direct your prayer straight to the problem that you have Hallelujah. so God can answer it because today the Holy Spirit is here. Yes. The Holy Spirit Hallelujah. is here. I'm not afraid. See, Hallelujah. all of them great tricksters, they kill people in Ghana and all these old send your money, tat the envelope, throw it in the garbage, all that. That's not of God. Hallelujah. What you must understand is of God is that if you are crying in your sleep, midnight gonna come. And when the when the midnight rider show up, he got power Hallelujah. to release the chains, to break those yokes, to get you free and, and give you your relief. Yes, sir. That's what he'll do. Yes. Because he loves you. Yes. God loves every each and every one of you. Yes, he does. And I know they didn't tell you. But you didn't get it right, and that's okay. All of us have sinned. That's all right. of us has fallen Tell short. And all of us has tripped and tipped and didn't do this and this. Come but on. God's still going to balance the budget. God still is going to bring it in so where all the receipts will match up. Hey. You won't be liking nothing. It's just like you did it all right when you get your name Amen written now. in the Lamb Book of Life. <laughs> and you yeah. got a new name and you got a new identity. And your, and, and, and your cares are cast on him. God got something for you today, children. Yes, sir. You just got to ask him according to your needs. To your needs. That's where we're at today. Listen, I'm going forward, but I had to get that out of us. Oh, yes. Father God, in the name, in of, the Jesus, name of Jesus, your children is out here, God. Yes, Father. I see them now, Father, on the edge, crying, don't push me. I see them, God, about ready to jump. Into nothing. I see them going backwards, God. But Lord, you told me to tell them that you are present. Yes. And you will help them according to their needs. According to their needs. If you could get God right now, children, in this prayer, you can get relief from your problems. Yes, sir. Well, how am I going to do it? Just pray. Hallelujah. And ask God to lead and guide you. Yes, sir. You don't have to know what to say. Hallelujah. Release that old bound up feeling of thinking you got to have it right. God knows what's right and He's you don't. In your heart, hallelujah. Let it work it out. Now, Father God, please hear my prayer for your people. Yes. For they need you now. Yes, sir. Some of them are crying, God, and can't stop the tears. Lord, have mercy. Some of them are confused, God, and don't know which way to turn. Lord, have mercy. So I'm God don't even understand why they've been called to be your children. Lord, Some of them don't understand, God, why this light that went out that they once saw so bright. Lord, have mercy. But Father, because of you, yes, sir. you have installed in their minds and their hearts yes. a, way a way 
way, hallelujah. Out of no way. Out of no way, yes. And you sir. said to it, relieve them of the stress. That's the word of God. And the burden of trying to be a good human being. Thank you, Lord. God, you said you would save them and recreate them and give them a, make them a new creature yes. and give them a new heart, God, yes. and a new mind and restore yes. unto them that was stolen by the enemy. Yes. You will rebuild the bridges that was burnt. You'll bring them into the house, God, that they didn't even desire, God, but it's theirs. You'll bring them into yes, sir. a refuge and a safe place where they can live for you, yes. speak for you, pray for you, talk to people about you, yes, sir. and give you the glory. God, please, in your son's name, I pray. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray and somebody ought to say amen. Well, Bishop, you already know I'm saying amen. Somebody say amen. I'm the amen cheerleader. Hallelujah. Hey, man. Glory to Jesus. God. Hallelujah. Hey. Thank you, Father. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise Glory God. Glory to God. Well, look here. I have to tell you. The Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. I didn't have to I check. I know that. I didn't have to check with nobody to see where he was. Hallelujah. This ain't Santa Claus on this sleigh coming around the mountain. Oh, the Holy yes. Spirit is hallelujah. here. Hallelujah. How do I know that he's here? Thank you. Because Jesus. everything in the atmosphere is electrified. Everything, and even these plants knows that God is here. Glory. This Bible knows God is here. Yes. Everything knows God when God shows up because it reverence God. And you, my friends, need to understand and reverence the Lord. Yes. He's here. The Holy Spirit is here. And I'm going to tell you again, whatever you need, Amen. That's what you put before the Lord. Whatever you need. Because God will answer these needs, and this is the day. This is the day and the hour that he would do it. Yes. I'm not going to go until tomorrow. God going to do this today yes. because he loves you. He loves you. He loves you more than anything you've ever even thought about. The agape love is a definition that man can wear, but God love is even greater than that. That he would give his only begotten son yes. just so you could be saved. Yes. Just so you didn't have to go to a burning hell. Yes. And so for you to have that kind of love from God, don't you know he will fulfill his promises that he made to you? God love you, folks. And this is why we preach. Yes, sir. Not to gain your attention, show you some great movement and entertain you. But God love you is yes, what Johnny Rutledge is telling you. Yes. He loves you. Hallelujah. He sent his son for you. And Hallelujah. so do I. Thank you, Lord. Randy and I do these broadcasts. And I pray that the Lord continue to bless her. Oh, She's yes. such an angelic person for the Lord. If there was a definition of an earth angel, that, that she would be one. I appreciate that. She vision. strive in the direction of the Lord and she do according to what does say the Lord. Glory. God, I just continue to pray for it and bless her. But I know this is the hour. For any of you, all of you, if you want God to be, listen, if you want a blessing from God. Come on, tell the bishop. I, I'm, I'm not going to suggest anything. I'm going to tell you directly. If you want to be blessed right now, reel, reel in, receive the truth about who he is. Yes, sir. He's a divine favor. He must work in line with his word, and his word says that he loves you more than you love yourself. Amen. Even closer than a brother. And he said he would never leave you, nor would he forsake you. He wouldn't give you a stone when you need bread. Yes. Or a scorpion when you, when you need fish. Yes. God will give you according to your needs. But I'm trying to tell you, the only reason why you haven't gotten your blessing from God is because you asked him for something other than your needs. And somebody got to tell you. Hallelujah. Bob, I just want my needs met. Yes. And he will bless that. God will bless that. God will bless that. You see, everybody want an abundance and everything and all of this and all of that. But what about your needs? Yes, that's what's important, Bishop. That's all you're going to get from God, and Hallelujah. then you will give him glory. Yes. Because that's the kind of God he is. He, he desires and must have his glory. Folks, tonight, if I be so kind and careful yes. to bring you a message Come tonight, on, 
It'll have to be one that's dear to my heart, but it'll have to be one that you have to embrace. You have to embrace this message because God is trying to tell us something in this, what we're going through tonight in this, in this world and what has happened with so many people. Mm. We must say that the grieving, you know, it may be all night and all day, but joy going to show up in the morning. Amen. The Bible says it. We must embrace the reality that God got a break from this disaster and that he's going to bring us into a good place. Yes. Some of you do not know God, even though you say you do. Yes. You can't quit on it. I've done it. You, I ain't no different than you. I've tried to quit. I've tried to get, I'm tired, God. You, why me is all yes. I say. Yes, but then you look around and see that it was him that died for you. Yes. Ain't no so tonight, ain't tonight, no tonight, let's see just where God would have for us to be. Where he take us, Lord. The Holy Spirit is here. Thank you, Jesus. Now let me tell you why I keep telling you that. Because some of y'all will never get any blessings from God until you embrace that he's present. Yes. How can you believe in a God you don't even believe he's with you? You can't summon God by 99 prayers. You can't summon God by looking to the east. Oh, you I can't know. summon God by paying at the altar. You oh, can't summon God by worshiping some man, woman, or child. You oh. must bow and worship him, but to believe that he's here. Is your only thing you Amen. can do. Now you receive tell this. Tell it, tell it. Receive tell Jesus. It. Hey, y'all, let's turn into the New Testament. Hallelujah. And let us do this. Let's look at the book of Matthews. The book of Matthews in the New Testament. And I want to be, I really want to be. In the first part of Matthews, the tax collector guy wrote some stuff in line with Luke, but a little bit different. He tells this story. He wrote it up this way. Matthew 2, and I want to take it from uh, Matthew the second, the second chapter. And I want to start, I want to say... Um, at the 13th verse. Yes. Matthew 2, 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother. Take the young child and his mother and flee in Egypt. And be thou there until I bring, bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child's life to destroy him. Yes. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, nah. and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof, the two years old and under, according to the time when he had diligently inquired of the wise men about the birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then was fulfilled which was spoken by Jeremy, the prophet said, In Ramah was there a voice heard, Lord. lamentation weeping, and a great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children yes. would not be com comforted That's right. because they were, not. they were not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph. In Egypt, saying, Arise, take that young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they that are they that are they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. And when he heard that Achilles 
did reign in Judea in the room of his fathers, Herod. He was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream. He turned aside into the part of Galilee, ended up in Nazareth. Yes. And he came and dwelled in a city called Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. He shall be called a Nazarene. Father, bless your word and bless the hearing of your word and bless those that can receive yes. the real, true word of God. For we pray that the word of God will continue to be a blessing to any in every soul that can hear it and receive it. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I said to you some things earlier, and some of you may have said to me some things while I was saying those things. I said, I said the Holy Spirit is here. Yeah. Some of y'all may have cussed me out. Some of y'all may have doubted what I said. Some of y'all may have thought that me saying that didn't mean what I said it meant. Some of y'all may have joined in with the choir and sung the hymnal, you know. Uh, thank God that he's here. Praise the Lord. The Lord is here. Mm -hmm. Now, however you concluded in your mind what God shared by way of this one preacher, I'm your preacher for the hour. I pray that you be blessed. I, you, I don't know what else I can tell you, but the thing that I can show you is that God's evidence of his spirit is me sitting here reading his word yes. and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and that is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Everything that God has done has always went back to his word yes. and lines up with his word. So if you know that the Bible says, how can they hear except they be by a preacher and how can he preach except that he be sent then it says that you cannot be saved unless you believe in your heart. Receive that that you believe. Confess with your mouth. Accept that Jesus Christ is the true, only one Son of God. And he will save you. Those things are reality, truth. Historical records don't change that. They all agree with what was written. Romans, the book of Romans, Paul wrote. All of that stuff is good. Jesus is talking now. This narrative you just read, I've just read to you, uh, that's God's explanation of what happened yes. with his son. Yes. Did you hear me? There yes. was an angel God sent to speak to the mind of the, uh, of the adopted daddy of Jesus to get him to safety. That was God doing this stuff. So this ain't no just by way of, this was God himself. Matter of fact, let me just say this about an angel. Basically, in the Bible, there's three different names. Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. Those are the names in the thing. There's many other, Abelon, Abagon, whatever it is, and the angel of God, all those things. But the three names is outstanding. Because those names are referencing how powerful God is. The one that stood at the, out there at the gate of the Garden of Eden that protected from all humanity and everything else. Then the other one that was there when Mary was trying to figure out her way of being betrothed that she would have the baby. And then the other one that was there when Elizabeth had to be told that John would be born and he had to have, as a Nazarite, the right to be the forerunner for this Christ. So these angels are real, folks. Yes, sir. These angels are true representatives of God. These ain't cherubim, cherubims, whatever you want to do. All this stuff Isaiah and them seen up there is glorious and happy. But these guys were charged by God to come down and do some stuff. Yes, sir. So if the baby was going to be born and the devil knew it, he was going to get some other devil to try to kill it. To try to destroy it. But God angel said, hey, hey Joseph. Yes. Hey, I know it ain't your real boy, but you better take him to take him to Egypt. And, and keep him there until I tell you to bring him back. Yes. The angels did that. These are angelic 
beings that are obeying God to do exactly what he said. You see, when one third of the angels fell in heaven, fell from heaven, Isaiah said, I see Lucifer fall like lightning from the sky. But when those third fall, fell, they fell just like that devil, just like Lucifer, who lost his name and became Satan. So you do not have the power, according to these angels, to touch Hallelujah. what is holy, Thank you, to Jesus. touch what is sacred, to touch what is divine. You don't have the power to do that, y'all. So watch what God is saying. In this. Let's go to the text. Let's go to the text. It says now when they departed, right? When they departed, yes. uh, behold, an angel of the Lord uh, told Joseph in a dream, arrive, take the child and his mother. That's funny how he would say that. You hear what the angel is saying? Take the child. And after the thought, he says, and the mother. In other words, and the mother could be left, but the child must be saved. <laughs> let, me, let me say it again. God was saving his boy no matter what was going to go down, yeah. even at the cost of losing his mother. God going to save Jesus. God going to save. He going to come and tend to his word. He going to make sure that the word became flesh. And the flesh of God is the son of God. And his word is true. And it's going to be saved. Every word is going to be saved. Every word in this Bible is going to be fulfilled. And as some say they believe it's already happened. But I'm telling you, God can't lie. He promised this boy to, to listen here. When God made the promise of this event here, you go all the way back to Genesis in chapter 3, and he promised Eve, the mother of all creation, that you're going to have a son. In so many generations, and that son is going to bruise the head of the serpent. Now, that is the beginning of the destruction of the serpent. That is not the destruction of the serpent. So when God said that, it all came into motion. And then come David, the king, way after Abraham. And David had a job of representing God. His kingdom would never lead to earth, is what God told him. And out of the loins of David, the line of Judah, all the way down, until the 42nd, all the way down, David had permission by God to produce sons that will produce sons. And them sons will produce daughters. And them daughters produce children. Yes. But right now, on the last generation, Mary's father called Jacob gave way that the spirit of God was dwelling in him, that dwelled in her. And do you know the fulfillment of Genesis 3 came alive because Mary delivered the baby of God. Mary delivered the promised child. Mary delivered, listen here, it had to happen because God said it. All I'm trying to tell you today is that God can't lie. And if he said something to you, that's what he's going to do. Yeah. But I want you to know God promises today to you is yea and amen. amen. God must do what he told you according to his will. his will. I'm lining you up to believe that the will of God is, is within your needs, not outside of them. Oh, Why would God want to bless you with a circus and you're not a clown? Why would God want to bless you with an airplane and you're not a pilot? Hallelujah. Why would God be interested in putting you somewhere where you don't even speak the language? Lord have mercy. God is lining you up for his purpose Hallelujah. to give him glory. But it will be according to the need you have. Yes, it will. On this day, back some years ago, in the 40s, I think, uh, the clerk, the prime minister, the evil ruler of South Africa, started to get a little itchy 
the angels had stirred him up and let him know, you got to let these people go. And he started making preparations to not only free Mandela, but to get rid of that rule that he had on the children of God in South Africa because they were not supposed to be ruled by England or no other country because they was children of God. Let me say this to you. Y'all got to believe that God is able. Stop thinking that what you're going through is too tough for God. Hallelujah. How could he bring us out of it? That's what you keep saying. But God has already created a plan, created a master plan that will deliver you. You don't have to worry about all the details, the strews, the nuts, and the bolts. God got it worked out. You just believe and receive it because I keep telling you the Holy Spirit is here. As long as the Holy Spirit is present, all your answers is yea and amen. And, amen. and you will forever be blessed. So grab a hold of your solution and rid yourself of your problem. Yes, sir. Dump your problem. Cast all your cares is what he says. But God got some answers. And tonight, it's a sacred journey we must take. Now watch this. Just watch what happened here. Let's go back to the text. Okay, so this fella, he decided uh, he wanted to kill all the children. Uh -huh. uh, the Bible says he was so harried. He was so, they call him King Harried. He was so angry, furious, frustrated, exceeding, exceedingly angry. He sent forth an edict, an order. Kill all the children two years and under in all the surrounding areas of the coast, especially in Bethlehem, where they say the, the new king was born. And then he said this. Uh, when that happened, I know what he said. I won't be threatened by no new king. Let us understand this. Herod. Who was Herod? Let's just say a couple of things about this guy. Herod was appointed, uh, you, you ever heard this thing here? Friends, Romans, and countrymen. Mm -hmm. Lend me your ear. You ever heard that? Yeah. Mark Anthony did that according to Shakespeare, uh, some kind of funeral ritual, whatever it is, the speech. I don't remember it all, but you learned that stuff in the ninth grade. And Mark Anthony and this guy who became Caesar decided that they would appoint someone over, Ju over that Judea region, over the Palestinian area, to rule over the Jews. Since Rome, well, that was running their province, you know, that, that was not, Jews didn't have rights to their own land. They was really slaves in that thing to the Romans. But they was, they was hard to rule. So this guy, Mark Anthony, and, and, and this guy who became Caesar, they just said they decided that what we would do. I'm talking about the same Mark Anthony that was with Cleopatra, the same Mark Anthony that was the fool from Rome, that him and the guy ended up killing each other or tried to kill each other. The point is, they appointed this man over this region. This man was so evil, he killed three of his wives. And to show the people how ruthless he was, before he killed that one of them, he told them this all the time. He said, this is my best wife. He had the best of the best. My best wife. That's bad, bitch. He killed her first. And then he killed two more of them. Then he killed three of his sons. He killed some of his children. Then he killed his relatives. They're slaughtering people. Crazy. And then he built a temple. He built temples that were so beautiful. They said it was almost beautiful than Solomon's temple. The same ruins of the temple in Jerusalem now, he built them temples. They say it was a great administrator. This is who they picked to put over these people. Kill people at random. Lord have mercy. He was a vicious murderer. On that hill called Masada, where his palace was, 
He had a winter home up there. First time in history, he created a, a inside living spa, a jacuzzi of running water and hot. It was a marvel. Nobody had ever seen this stuff before. He was amazing with his all these stuff. He could do all this stuff. But this was the guy that gave the edict and, 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 and the thing to say, kill all them babies. Yes. Do you know that I've been in, I mean person, I've been in the military, and they give you a, they give you an order when you go into the enemy's territories, and you're looking for it like they did with Bin Laden. They say, uh, search and destroy. Search and destroy. That's what the order is, right? So you're searching for that enemy, and when you find that enemy, you know, there's no uh, dead or alive. It's destroyed yes. immediately. Yes. So Barack Obama and, and his people and Joe Biden and all of them, they had that order. And, and when they found Bin Laden and those people, they say, search and destroy. They got him and they killed him and then they destroyed him and, and, and buried him out at sea or something. But the point is, Herod had this order. Yes, for the children, Lord. For babies. Search and destroy. What a monster he must have been. And they, and they, and they found babies in, in Bethlehem. Historical records tell us that in that area, there's about 15 new baby boys. 15, between 12 and 15 new baby boys in Bethlehem. And, and imagine in all the other little towns around 15 or 20 baby boys under two and all that. He had them killed in their mother's arms. Lord have mercy. But the angel told Joseph, and some of y'all, let me say this because this is going to be a hard saying. We have got to stop calling outside children bastards. We have got to stop calling children when you father a child outside of your marriage or you got a child in your marriage and it ain't your husband. You got to stop calling these children strange names because that's exactly what Jesus was. Yes, sir. The angel told Joseph, take your adopted son, take the boy you did not have and take care of him and take him to Egypt where he will be protected and love him above all your other children. And Joseph obeyed the angels. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And he carried that boy to Egypt. You know, Joseph, the other Joseph, Jacob's son, was in Egypt, and Pharaoh wanted to meet his father. And after he came down and met his father, and Pharaoh questioned him a bit, said, man, you sure look old. He said, yeah, I'm a man of many years and full of sorrow. He said, I tell you what, though, but your boy has been a germ to us. He's the best blessing Egypt have ever had. Because of him, tell me now, old man, what do you want from me, the Pharaoh? Hallelujah. And he said, just somewhere for me and my people to be. Yes, sir. And Pharaoh told Joseph, give him Goshen. Give him that land up there. Up there, the northern part, give him all of that. The best, give it to him. Yes, sir. And Jacob became the head of that land. Jacob became that person, that blessing out there. That land was a blessing. And here it is, hundreds of years later, generations later, Jesus being carried by his adopted father into Egypt goes straight into that land. Let me tell you about Egypt at that time. Egypt was really even challengeable. It was even, I wouldn't say as, as powerful as Rome, but they had at one time the control of the world up in the lower now. And, and Rome now is, is, is taking over and, and controlling. But Egypt was the refuge of the place where all the Jews ran from the Romans. They would, leave, they would leave Israel, they would leave their homeland and go into Egypt to hide from the wicked, evil rule of Rome. And when Joseph carried that boy there, guess what he met? Guess who he met? He met some of his own folks. It was full of nothing but Jews. Hallelujah. Descendants of Jacob. Descendants of Jacob's children. 
And even those that escaped and went back to Egypt was there. The reason why we know that is because in Alexandria, Egypt, at that time, there was over a million Jews living in that city. Do you know God had already prepared the place of safety for Jesus? No matter what this thing was going to do, uh, this crazy king, God had prepared a place for Jesus to hide, for Jesus to be covered. Yeah. But you don't want to ever doubt God, I'm what trying to tell you. Because God will prepare whatever you need. You don't even know it's been. Listen, Jesus was the son of God. Yes, sir. <laughs> and he didn't even have to know what he was going. Well, where y'all taking me? He didn't have to understand none of that being a baby. Amen. But God prepared a place of safety for him. And when he got there, he saw kids that looked like him. Yes, sir. He fit right in. You know, we was always taught in, in seminary and all these places. Well, you know, uh, the Egyptians were dark and Jesus was dark and they didn't know any better. But Jesus was with Jews. Some of them was just like him, just escaped over the border, running from Rome. And so Joseph would have known it. Joseph knows this is a safe place. Yes, sir, Bishop. Hide now. Why couldn't Harry go and get him? Because he could not break what God had promised. Mm -hmm. Satan can't never violate what God has promised you. Stop being afraid. Oh, God no. said, let me do this, please. If God has spoken to you, some of y'all yes. always say, air well on TV. God told me this. God, if God ever told you anything, he told you everything. Yes. And that everything he told you is for your life to be preserved. Yes. And do you know God dispatched these angels to take care? Of, this boy was never in trouble. Never in trouble. So when the angel told the wise men, don't you go back to Herod. Do you know they obeyed the angel and not yes, Herod? Yes, hallelujah. So when God is telling you something, God must honor his own word. God must keep his promise. God cannot lie. So I want you to line up with the word of God and get your blessing. And that blessing is what you need. Yes. Not what you want. What you need. All right, watch this. So they say Herod died. The angels say, Joseph, get ready. Bring that baby back. Bring that baby back. Yes. And bring him back to Galilee. And then Joseph decided, because of the angel's instruction, we'll take him to, uh, you know, uh, Nazareth. Because he must be a Nazarene. We'll take him there. Now, the Bible is telling us clearly that everything God told this man to do, he did it. Here we need to see this. Herod, right? That wicked, evil king. Yes. That Rome made a king. God didn't make him no king. He now must die. He gonna die. That all devils gonna die. So oh. you'll know. Amen. So you'll stop worrying. They gonna live. No, they gonna die. Herod had to die. And I used to ask the question, how come there wasn't a lot of stuff written about his death like this? Well, the historical record shows this. He died and for hundreds of years, they say, he had syphilis. That's what we say, died from syphilis. But this, this pathologist, this guy that studies how historical people die like he did with uh, Alexander the Great, from ty 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 typhoid fever or something, whatever it's called. He, he studied Harry, and he found out Harry had a severe kidney disease. And the kidney disease was one of the problems he had. But he also had something they call fortinards, which is like um, uh, rottening up the testicles. Oh, and he yeah. had gained green oh, in his male organs. He had gained green down there between his legs. And he was rotting away, and he was dying from that. So what he did was, this is the devil, I'm trying to tell you. He died, knowing he died. And they say when he was so sick, so deadly, poisoned, when you got getting green, all your flesh turns black. 
and his pulse and all this stuff, and you just a rotten human being yet alive, but you rotten in their way. And his kidneys was rotten from the inside out. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he goes out on his porch, mm. barely able to stand. He make another decree. He didn't say, y'all, forgive me. I wish I never had it done. No, he said, he said, I know this kind of disease, this kind mm -hmm. of problem. I got to die. See, that disease he had was worse than leprosy. Lord have mercy. You was guaranteed to die fast with this. Yeah. But, but, but what yeah. he was saying was, I got to do something worse than what I did with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Couldn't kill him then. I'll kill him now. He told all of his Roman soldiers, all of the lieutenants and captains, when I die, go into every Jew house and kill one of their members. Lord have mercy. He, he, he wrote it and made it, write it out and promised, when I die, the day I die, kill one member of every Jewish person in Palestine. Oh. Every Jewish family in Palestine, kill one of their family members. And, and you know what he said? That way, that would be great mourning on my day of death. Because he knew nobody would mourn for him. He knew he wouldn't have. See, they, they had already paid for funeral procession. They paid for the well and women's. They gave him money so when Harry died, y'all gonna get paid, y'all got your money. You gonna rock crying and hollering and all that. So he said, kill one of their family members. And they would mourn for real. Sure enough, he died. And his henchmen and all of his folks could not carry it out. God wouldn't allow it. Wouldn't carry it out. Couldn't carry it out. But he died. Herod had to die. The one that killed all the babies. Died in a rot. Let me say this again. Wherever the spirit of God is, there's liberty. Yes. But there's peace. There's love. And I guarantee you this much. When God is present, your needs I didn't say shall be, can be met. Because you must believe that he's here. Yes. I embrace the fact that God is in this house. Hallelujah. I embrace the fact that God is in my heart. I embrace the fact that God is in my wife. I embrace the fact that God is here. So whatever my needs are, I don't have to beg. God know what I need. And he will fulfill that. Yes. Now let me say this again. As nice as I know how. You've been kind. You've been patient. And you've been as God would have you. You've humbled yourself. And you said, now Lord, have your way. I want to tell you tonight that there is such thing as angelic beings. The angels of God has power. And they will come to your rescue. Yes. Just like they did Jesus. God will send your help. He will bless you. He will bless you. God will do that. And you need to know that there is nothing you can ask God for that he will not give you according to your needs. I keep saying that because a lot of us is off track. Now I'm trying to tell you what your needs are. I'm just telling you whatever your needs are, God will fulfill that. He's a God that cannot lie. And this is simple preaching. Ain't nothing sophisticated about this. Amen. God know how to do what he said he will do. You know, Jeremiah said these words that in Roma, said Rachel, said the babies was crying and would not be stopped, could not be stopped. Let me say this. I just need to say this. Because we need to know this is the Bible. Amen. In Jeremiah 31 and 15. Thus said the Lord. A voice was heard in Ramah. Lamentation. And bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children. Refused to be comforted for her children. Because they were not. I had several questions asked to me when I first started preaching uh, the gospel. Uh, when I was a young preacher, my mother and her sister, uh, Minnie Brazel, my Aileen, 
Aileen had a question she always wanted to ask me. And I said, well, go ahead on and ask me. She said, what did it mean by Rachel could not stop weeping because her children must die? Now, this woman had been saved all her life, and she knew all this Bible stuff. She could read. My mother could read, but she could read. And I, and I thought I knew something. I, I gave her the best answer I could at that time. Well, now, Aileen, I know you're in heaven, but I got the answer. Amen, brother. <laughs> I got the answer finally. You know, Rachel was Jacob's favorite wife. Yes, she was. That was his favorite wife. That was the one he chose before anything else, even though his, her father tricked him. But God allowed her to weep. You know, when, he, when, when, he, when, when, when God told her that she would be his wife, and he knew that would be his wife, God had it in plan that Jacob would be Israel. Yes. And Israel would be saved by God. And Rachel will be the mother of Israel. Yes. So God will refer to Israel as being his children. And Rachel talking about Israel. Hallelujah. She talking about the, the nation of Israel. She talking about the descendants of Jacob. So I got it now, Aileen. I know what you I know what you was after. God will say that that he has called. By his name. Yes, sir. He promised he would do it and he will do it. And this is the hour where he did it. Yes, sir. The baby's crying. But God saved Israel. Yes, he did. Because he saved Jesus. Yes. He did that. And I pray and thank God that each one of y'all like that. Trust, hold on, and have faith. I don't want to give you a future date. Don't go to sleep tonight not believing that Jesus is not here. Don't go to sleep tonight not believing the Holy Spirit is not here. I'm talking to everybody that can hear me. I don't care if it's 100 years from now. If you can believe that the Spirit of God is here, you can receive what you need from God because that's what he wanted to do. Amen. And you will be blessed. He said he will provide your needs. He done did that because he, he preserved his word. He saved Israel is all that she was crying about. Hallelujah. Now tonight, have faith. Have faith. Hold on. Yes, sir. And don't doubt. Yes, sir. Because the Holy Spirit is here. Yes. And that's what you will. Yes. According, according to, to your needs. needs. According Hallelujah. to your needs. That's what you will now. Not according you to want, your needs. And you God will need. answer those prayers. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I don't know what I need. I don't even know what to ask. But Father, I know that you know. Yes, you know, God. Father, you told Peter that all these questions, Peter, you can ask. And Peter said, I can't. Because only you know. Only you know, Father. Father, only you know, God, what we need tonight. Yes. Randy and I have been faithful to you, God. Yes, and we prayed and preached. But, God, that ain't nothing compared to what you've been to us. Yes, sir. Now, God, we don't know what to ask you for. But what we do know is that we need to ask you. Yes. According to your divine plan Glory. and purpose for our life, Father. Hallelujah. The needs that we have, God, you promised to meet them. Yes, you did. We embrace that reality because you know, God, you can't lie. Yes. And you will never fail. You'll never abandon us or forsake us. You said, God, you never seen the righteous forsaken. No, you never seen the seed bed bread. Yes, you said you would honor us, God, according to our divine plan and in, in your plan and purpose. Yes. What we must do. And tonight, God, we got folks out here. We got people out here, my sisters and my brothers. They need you now, Jesus. Yes. Let them understand, God, that you is a need filler. Yes, he is. The word and of God do it now. said it. You'll do it now. Yes. And it'll be done for all eternity. Hallelujah. God, I praise you. I worship you. I give you the glory. Yes, sir. And I did all of this, Father, in your darling in son's name, name Jesus, Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. And somebody ought to say, Bishop, amen. you already know I'm saying amen. <laughs> It's a Wednesday night fellowship, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You know the bishop, you know I get hyped with the music and praising God. And Amen. But you know what? We have had a challenge 
Amen. We gave ourselves a challenge based on this word that you just heard the bishop speak. Amen. And let me tell you what the challenge was. Because over the years, we've always prayed for certain things. Yeah. We've always prayed for certain amounts of money. Amen. We've always prayed for certain homes or cars Amen. and things for our children. Amen. But most recently, we gave ourselves a challenge. Amen. Because we thought about what our, his mother said. Mama used to say, seek ye first the kingdom and all this righteousness <laughs> and all these things to be added unto you. Now, now, when I first got saved, she must have said that a thousand times, just, <laughs> just in one or two months. And I'm just like, what is the kingdom of God? I'm trying to figure it out. But just like he said, Aunt Lena, I got the answer. I got the answer for you. Amen. If you take this challenge, I guarantee that the word is true and it will show up in your life. Amen. Here's the challenge. Don't tell God anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't tell God nothing. Amen. Don't tell people God told you anything. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you are in your quiet space and you're laying down or you're talking to your mate, your partner, whomever, whatever, your children, repeat these scriptures. The grace and the mercy of God endure forever. Amen. God shall apply, supply my needs according to his richness and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. And begin to just say that and just believe that. Amen. Scrap what you said God told you all these years. Amen. Scrap what you've been believing God for and praying for and start afresh anew. Amen. And say the word of God back to Amen. God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, under the blood of Jesus. This challenge we have been doing, and I tell you, Lord have mercy, I can't tell you what happened. But I can tell you this. It's like Jubilee at 6201 where we live. <laughs> Jubilee came and wiped out some debts. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. We didn't specifically play for a thing. We said those scriptures and we holding on to that. Amen. And it came after I did the thing on the wants versus the needs. Amen. It just... God just transformed our minds Amen. and let us know. He said, he already know what your problems are. He already knows what yes. you have need of yes. before you even yes. yes. Stop <clears throat> being prideful in front of God. Mm. Humble yourself before the throne mm. and pray the word of God. And, I, and we wasn't praying for this, I'm telling you. Six things that was on our mind, what we was going to do, wiped totally clean. Yeah, God does that. The Lord does I that. I tell you that because I don't know what you need, but the word of God is the answer to everything. Amen. And if you would get off your pride for <clears throat> horse and what you've been and who you are in the ministry and all these things and come to the throne of God as a child, hallelujah. Mm. And say his word. Amen. It's going to change something. It's something going to erupt in your life in a good way. Humble yourself. Hallelujah. I tell you, this is the Wednesday night fellowship. And we love you. This is God's ministry. He even provides for all this. The Holy Spirit is here. Yes. That's what's happening. We don't ask you for anything. And who provides? God. The because Holy Spirit who's in is it? here. God, earth is the earth is the Lord and the fullness of everything within and without belongs to God. Amen. Even Amen. this body is a living sacrifice to do the will of God. Amen now. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And I say one last thing, and this might sound funny. But if you can just be a donkey with a string attached to your neck on a fence that Jesus say, tell such and such. 
to give me that donkey because That's I right. have need of it. That's right. If you can just humble your prideful self, you can get what God has for you. You can't even know what's there. Amen. God bless you on the night. We thank you for tuning in to the Wednesday Night Fellowship, a hype of praise and the powerful gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. We come to you every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Don't forget to tune into the Sunday Live every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And check out over 200 sermons that the bishop has preached on faithtv.lightcast.com. If you have Roku, look for the Singletree app and you'll find all of the ministry as well as our partners. You'll find their content on there. If you have Fire, look on Singletree app. You'll find us on Apple and Roku and iOS. And just join in with the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. It'll bless your soul. God bless you. This has been a Wednesday Night Fellowship. <laughs> it's Wednesday Night. Yeah.